Hey, welcome to another episode of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and uh, today this is just another one of my kind of little general episodes where I'm going to catch you up on what I've been doing for the past week or so since I posted last. Um, yeah, so where will I start? Maybe I'll just quickly jump into movies. Um, I just saw Crawl the other day, um, which is the new alligator movie. Um, if you haven't seen the previews for that, it's a, a girl goes home to check on her father during a hurricane. When she gets there, she finds he's trapped in the basement, which is filling up with water, and there's a bunch of alligators in there. And, uh, and yeah, I like a good, you know, shark, alligator, dinosaur movie, whatever. I even like when those movies are bad. Uh, I can, you know, still enjoy them just for being silly monster movies. But it is always nice when those movies are actually good. And I thought Crawl was good. Um, you know, it's well acted. Uh, it's well directed. Um, you know, it's under an hour and a half, just shy of that. So, you know, it doesn't overstay its welcome. There's lots of alligator action. So, yeah, I'd recommend you check out Crawl. Um, that's, I think, the only thing I've saw in theaters since I talked to you guys last. I'm hoping to maybe see uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and uh, maybe The Art of Self-Defense, which are both coming out tomorrow. I'm filming this on Thursday. And uh, my wife, Vanessa, wants to see The Lion King, so I'm, I might go see that too. I don't know. Um, what else did I watch? I just watched Fighting with My Family last night. Um, that, that's been around a while, so if you guys were interested in that, you've probably already seen it. But if you were curious about it, that's a, kind of a true story of a, of a young girl from England or Scotland or someone who gets into the WWE. And, uh, you know, it's one of these WWE produced movies, so I didn't go in with really high expectations. Um, but it was directed by Stephen Merchant, who I like quite a bit, and he's in the movie just a, just a little bit. I was hoping he'd be in it more than he was. But yeah, I enjoyed the movie. So fighting with my family, pretty good. Um, I also bought a, a while ago. I bought the uh, Blu-ray of Batman versus the Ninja Turtles, which is an animated DC movie, and I loved it. Uh, I forgot to mention it in my one of my last videos. Whenever I did buy it, um, so yeah, I just wanted to mention that too. If you haven't seen Batman versus the Ninja Turtles, I recommend you check it out. Uh, so yeah, that's it for movies. Um, so let's talk about toys. So the first thing I want to talk about as far as toys go is the Action Force Kickstarter, which if you watch my other videos, you've probably seen me promote it. I've done uh, two videos about Action Force. In one of them, I actually had the creator, uh, Bobby Valla, actually come on the episode and, uh, and talk about his toy line. So what Action Force was was an original toy line created by Bobby Valla, and he was trying to get it funded on Kickstarter. And, uh, yeah, I was really excited about it. The toys looked really cool. It was kind of six inch military figures in the same vein as GI Joe. And, uh, so yeah, he had 30 days to fund that project and the project ended on July 15th. And unfortunately it did not get funded. Um, he had, uh, 409 backers and raised about $85,000. And the goal to the minimum funding goal was 170,000. So yeah, he was really only about, you know, halfway there or so. And even then he had some pretty lofty stretch goals. Um, so yeah, you know, just to hit that 170 was just to get the original or sort of the initial uh, five figures made. But then for every 20,000 more, or whatever he got, he would have unlocked a new figure and a new figure. So yeah, I was really hoping that we would see this thing blow up like some past Kickstarters have and we would get all the figures. Um, but as it was drawing closer to the end, uh, it really seemed like we were going to get lucky to even get the basic five and even that didn't pan out. So that's unfortunate. And, uh, yeah, there's lots of speculation as to why, um, I don't know Bobby personally, uh, when he agreed to come on my show, it was just because I'd commented on, uh, another video he was on that I was excited about the line and he offered, to come on here and speak about it but yeah i'd never met the guy before that so i can't really speak too much about him personally but there seemed to be a lot of backlash um towards him personally which might have affected the line i don't know why um but the internet's a can be a nasty place people were you know throwing maybe a lot of shade his way and then he maybe didn't uh answer 
their comments and questions in the most uh, you know professional of manner, and people really held that against him. Uh, he also started off on kind of the wrong foot in that there was another six-inch um, Kickstarter project called Army Alphas, which had just wrapped up about two months or so before he launched. And when he was first um, getting ready to launch his project, he did uh, like kind of talk a little trash about that other project. And a lot of six-inch collectors had already invested money in that project and probably didn't like the fact that he was calling them out and saying that he didn't think that project would ever see the light of day and they were throwing their money away into this project. So that that also got him a little bit of animosity with the six-inch collector crowd. Um, a lot of the G.I. Joe crowd that he was going for were very adamant that they wouldn't buy a six-inch figure. They want their G.I. Joes to be, you know, three and three-quarter inch figures, um, which I get because you want the figures to be compatible with your G.I. Joes. But at the same time, a large part of the G.I. Joe like collector community has been saying for years and years and years, they think what the G.I. Joe brand really needs to get reinvigorated is a detailed six inch line, you know, sort of like Marvel Legends or the Star Wars Black Series. So that's what Bobby Vallow was trying to do. And who knows, maybe if this had been G.I. Joe, it would have happened rather than just kind of a, you know, a generic, I don't know, generic, but like an original toy line that doesn't have any sort of history or nostalgia that had, uh, you know, a, a lot more ground to make up than say G.I. Joe would have. Um, another issue that people were talking about was, um, some things that I think he thought would be received really positively by the G.I. Joe community, um, which was he first, he, you know, there for a while he, his project was unnamed and then he revealed that it was called Action Force and Action Force was the name of the G.I. Joe brand over in Europe. And I guess Hasbro had let the copyright on that lapse. So he uh, scooped it up and he was going to use the name for his line. So he thought that kind of like tie to G.I. Joe would get Joe fans excited. But especially for Joe fans in Europe that grew up collecting Action Force, um, they seemed kind of offended saying that you stole the name Action Force, you know, from G.I. Joe. Now if Hasbro ever does decide to revive Action Force, now they can't because you stole the name. And that seemed to rub people the wrong way. Similarly, um, there's a generic trooper type as part of G.I. Joe called the Steel Brigade. And that was actually Bobby Valla's favorite G.I. Joe toy. And the name Steel Brigade had also lapsed. And he had taken that uh, copyright or trademark, one or the other. And so he released a figure called Steel Brigade. Now, he couldn't make it look exactly like the G.I. Joe Steel Brigade. Um, but he could take in the name and kind of make a character that was similar in, in look. So that was another thing that he waited to announce. He told people he had a big surprise announcement that he thought people would be really excited about. And I was. I thought it was kind of cool. But he did get a lot of backlash from others saying, now if G.I. Joe comes back, Hasbro can't do a Steel Brigade because you've taken it, and that really pisses us off. So it seemed like everything he was doing was backfiring. Uh, also, uh, he made up... Um, just a very basic fiction, which I think he thought would help the line. He thought, well, if there's a little bit of a storyline for people to get invested in, they'll be more likely to support the line. So if you go to his website, uh, valiverse.com, you can read about how, you know, in the near future, the United States is, you know, kind of crumbled and independent republics have formed. And basically the Republic of Texas, which was now called New Colonia, was this big growing power and the rest of the states were kind of fighting against it. Now, he didn't necessarily say anybody was a good guy or a bad guy, but you could kind of interpret from that the kind of new colonia was kind of meant to be the bad guys. And people were really bothered by that too. People gave him a lot of flack online about why would you make Texas the bad guys and even the name new colonia they took some offense to because I guess... In Texas, a colonia is a slum or something, and people took the name as a slight against Texans. So pretty much anything Bobby could have done that would have upset people, it happened, and that sucks. I wish it was just the toys could have just won everybody over, because I think they would have been great to have. Um, and they might still, like, uh, you know, when the Kickstarter ended, you know, Bobby sent out an email and said, you know, this didn't fund. I didn't really have a plan B because he was really confident this was going to happen. But uh, he's going to have to take another look at things and decide his next step. 
So that might be another Kickstarter if he changes things up. Um, or maybe he'll try and fund it himself. Or I, I don't know. We'll see. I hope it does see the light of day in some format. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, what else we got in toy news? So I'm filming this on Thursday. The San Diego Comic Con is this weekend. So over the next couple of days, there's probably going to be lots of cool toy news coming out. Um, but there has been a few things that have already come out. Um, so there's some new Marvel Legends. So the new series of Avengers Endgame figures, um, they've only revealed figures from the movie. So no new comic book figures there. So there's a new version of Valkyrie, uh, a new version of Captain America, a new version of Hemdale or Heimdale, a uh, new version of Vision, new Iron Patriot, and the Build-A-Figure is going to be the Fat Thor, the kind of big Lebowski-looking Thor from Avengers Endgame. Um, Transformers, there's not a whole lot revealed, but there's some pretty cool stuff. The biggest thing is that there, Hasbro is doing a crowdfunding for a gigantic Unicron figure. Now, Unicron, I have an older version of Unicron. You can kind of see him on the shelf there behind me, the big orangey guy there. Boop. And that's good enough for me. That guy there, he's probably about 18 inches tall or so. This new one they're making is 27 inches tall, which will make it the biggest Transformer ever. And it's much more accurate to his appearance in the animated movie. And, you know, he's got some cool features, such as when he turns into a planet, uh, he's got a cool display base for him. And the kind of maw on the planet mode opens and closes. Like, it looks really cool. But this thing is almost 600 bucks American to fund, and they're only going to make it if they get a minimum amount of uh, people to commit to buying that, similar to a Kickstarter. And yeah, it's just not something that uh, that I, I'm interested in doing at that price. But still very cool, and I hope it happens. Um, there's also some cool repaints that they've shown. Um, so I recently got the Siege version of Optimus Prime. I've showed that on a video a week or two ago. Hey, um, I haven't picked up the Megatron yet, and I wasn't sure if I was going to. But anyway, those two figures are being re-released with kind of a cell shading look to closer resemble the 80s cartoon, which I think looks really cool. If I'd known they were doing that, I probably would have held off on Optimus and bought that one. Um, but I probably will uh, pick up that Megatron, one before I wasn't sure if I was going to even bother with a Siege version of Megatron. They're also uh, redoing Soundwave, who I just showed you in my last video. But what? So they're redoing him in black, which looks pretty cool. Um, and then some of the new figures they revealed, there was a, a Siege version of Ratchet, which is basically just a repaint with some new, probably a new head and stuff of the Ironhide, which is cool because Ratchet is one of those G1, kind of one of the main characters. And really, this is the only Ratchet I have in my collection currently, which I think is a decent figure, but it's, it's far from G1 accurate. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting the new version of Ratchet. And then there was also um, Blue Streak, which is another classic, you know, G1 character from like the original series. And I don't have a Blue Streak in my collection. At least, I don't think so. Anyway. Um, so yeah, looking forward to Blue Streak as well. Um, and the other thing coming out of San Diego Comic Con that was uh, I was excited about is the new Ninja Turtle figures from NECA. So there's this four, four, four packs coming out, um, which they haven't hit stores around here yet, but they were shown, um, sometime last year, or early, very early this year. Um, so that was the four turtles and they were packaged with Krang, Shredder and two foot soldiers. Well, so there's some new two packs revealed. So Bebop and Rocksteady, who we've already, we had seen previewed before as well as Leatherhead. Um, so we're getting some better shots of him. But now we also know that there's going to be a Casey Jones and April O'Neil and Metalhead and what's that? You know, Slash, the evil turtle. Um, and yeah, it looks like it might be possibly some foot soldier variants and stuff as well. So there's a lot of cool Ninja Turtle stuff coming out. And uh, speaking of Ninja Turtles, there's some other really cool figures based on that Batman vs. Ninja Turtles movie I told you about a little earlier. Um, this wasn't revealed at, at Comic-Con, but they were just revealed a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, it's done in that specific animation style, and they look really cool. 
I'm not even like a huge Turtles guy, and I have a few versions of them already. But I really plan to pick up these NECA ones, which is based on the 80s animation. I might pick up at least a couple of these ones based on the Batman uh, animated movie. And I'm tempted, if I see them around, to pick up NECA's um, live-action Ninja Turtles based on the, 80, the 1990 movie as well. So, yeah, I might end up with a bunch more t- Turtles. Um, so, yeah, that's that. So I think that's all I have to talk about. So maybe we'll just wrap this up by me showing you just uh, the handful of new figures I've got this past week. So yeah, let's do that. So I recently picked up this Han Solo figure, and this features uh, young Han Solo from the movie Solo um, for the time that he was enlisted with the Empire, and he was on the planet Mimbin, I believe it was, and he was wearing this, uh, this armor here, which is that of a mud trooper. So um, I don't really need a Han Solo in Mud Trooper armor because it's you know it's pretty scene specific. He only wore it for a very little, sh- very short time. Um, so the reason I picked this up though is because once I open it up, I can put his goggles down and put his kind of breather mask over his face, and then it makes for just a perfectly fine generic Mud Trooper uh, figure. And they haven't made a Mud Trooper figure yet, so this is really the only way you're going to get one at least at this point. So let's uh, pop him open and do that. Okay, so here is Mud Trooper Han Solo. And yeah, he looks pretty great. You can see there that the goggles and the breather fit over him very nicely. And you can't even tell that this is a Han Solo figure. At a glance, you might not even know that those items are removable. Uh, He also has, the cape is removable too, and it doesn't stay on quite as well. It just kind of rests on there, but it doesn't really attach in any uh, sophisticated way. There's no pegs or anything on there. And yeah, so otherwise he's pretty much what you'd expect if you have any of these Star Wars Black Series figures. It's, you know, same old thing. Double jointed knees there, swivels at the ankle, you know, good stuff. It looks great. The sculpting's really nice. The paint's really nice. So there you go. Goggles come off. Breather, it just slides in there. Um, the, The tubes are plugged into the back. So you unplug those, and then this thing just kind of pops out. Er. Yeah, there you go. And it looks like the whole helmet, sorry, the whole helmet is removable. Uh, I haven't bothered to take it off. I, I don't think I will. I don't, I'm worried I won't be able to get it back on there. But yeah, the likeness is really good. It's a little eerie. It's got that kind of the printing, the digital printing, where they just kind of take a photograph of the dude's face and slap it on there. But yeah, it, it really looks like the actor. So yeah, pretty cool. I'm happy with this figure. And I um, think he'll look great on my shelf of Stormtroopers. So I recently picked up this Marvel Legends 2-pack. So it contains Armin Zola, which is the Hydra like scientist. And it's got this uh, Hydra version of Captain America, known as Hydra Supreme. So you'll see there he's kind of an armored version of Captain America. And the green and gold... There's a little image of Hydra Cap there on the back. Some shots of the figures there with a little bio. And a cool shot of Armzilla. So yeah, there you go. Let's take a look at these two guys outside of the packaging. So let's first take a look at Armzilla. So yeah, he looks really cool. I like this figure a lot. The sculpt is really nice. The colors really... Uh, bright, dynamic. He's interesting to look at. And yeah, so he's got two heads. Like Armanzola kind of doesn't really have a head because he's got this computer screen in his chest where he does his speaking from. But so he's got, yeah, this one optional head, which pops off right here, I think. And then he's got this other optional head, which is more accurate to kind of his vintage look in the comic books. So you could plop that on there boop, like that instead. Uh, either way, they both look good. I'll probably just leave them like this. I kind of like that look. The face and the chest looks pretty cool. He looks pretty maniacal. I'd seen this online, and I was kind of hoping that this would be lenticular, like it would move a little bit. It kind of looks like it would, but it's just a still image there, which, you know, I guess is fine. But yeah, I'm kind of surprised they use such kind of like contemporary 
stylized looking artwork. I would have expected them to use something a little more classic looking, but uh, I do, I dig the, uh, the artwork there. So yeah, this figure is very cool. And yeah, he's got some accessory there. I'm not sure what that is. Some gadget with some buttons. I'm sure it does something evil. So yeah, right on. Armenzola. So here is Hydra Cap. And to some collectors, this might be a figure that you feel like, I don't need this at all. This was just, you know, it happened in one short-lived storyline. It's not like this is a reoccurring character. You know, it's a very story-specific costume. And I didn't read that particular story. Um, a lot of people didn't care for it. I didn't really have a problem one or the other. Some people seem bothered by the fact that Captain America would join Hydra, but it's comic books and, you know, he was brainwashed and whatever else. And I kind of thought maybe I would read it after the fact. Um, but I'm not a huge Nick Spencer fan. He's the guy that wrote that series, so I'm not in any big rush to go pick it up. But this figure design is very cool. So it's kind of a cross between Captain America and Iron Man. And I'm not sure if this is exactly what he wore in the comic books. Like, even the artwork on the packaging showed him with kind of an open face there. We could still see his, his mouth and nose. But here it's kind of solid. So I don't know. Maybe in the comic books it was a bit of both. Maybe this plate came down and covered it. I don't know. But I like the fact that it's a full face mask. It kind of makes him look different than uh, my other Cap figures. Um, this is actually probably my favorite Captain America figure I have in the Marvel Legends style. Um... Because I really want a good comic accurate one. I do have a decent comic book one. But he's kind of short compared to this guy. And then the movie based ones that look like Chris Evans are cool. But I always prefer kind of comic accurate versions. So yeah, this is probably the coolest cap I have. Now my one kind of beef with this figure. Is that, uh, you know, he's Hydra. So it would be nice if he matched my Hydra soldiers. But here are the Hydra soldiers from the uh, Hydra 2 pack that came out. A while back and you can see there they're much uh i don't know the green and the yellow don't really match Whoops. there they go but yeah see, they're clearly yellow where this guy is gold you know they don't really look like they'd be from the same team or organization um it's a minor quibble i don't think this figure would necessarily look any better if it was in those colors so that's not necessarily what i'm, I'm wanting but it just would have been nice to have a little little consistency there but yeah, otherwise, great figure. The accessory is just that shield, but it looks really cool. It can be held two ways, either strapped onto his wrist there, or you can fit it into his hand, I believe. Although, he doesn't really have good gripping hands. I don't think he came with any alternate hands. Maybe he did. I don't know. But either way, it's a cool figure. I like it. If you see this two-pack, I would say pick it up. Okay, so that's my new stuff. Um... Thanks a lot for watching. As always, please be sure to like the video, comment below, subscribe to the channel, all that stuff. Very much appreciated. And uh, yeah, until next time.